Hey, welcome back. Welcome to the channel. Good to see you again. And yes, thank you guys. I posted this video yesterday on this noise meter, distortion noise meter. And you guys came back with a lot of help. And uh, I gotta thank you guys. I knew you, I knew somebody out there would know something. A lot more than I do. I'm, I'm just learning on this. I don't know anything about it. And um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with a few of the posters there. They said um, to do distortion. Okay, first off, I believe the noise meter part of this is working fine. It seemed to be working, but the distortion wasn't. The relays were clicking and stuff. So the comments were set this to calibrate and then feed it a signal. And I'll turn my signal generator on. And I think you can see it on the scope. Turn that, turn that up and down as it needed. So you calibrate this to whatever scale you want, either the DBM or percentage I'm going to go with percentage so let's go uh, set this to one percent or full scale deflection that's our signal right and then when you switch it to read uh, this is a th no this is a, let me let me set this up with a thousand Hertz tone See now it's doing its freak out thing again Let's set this to full scale on calibrate and now let's hit read and look at that signal that's coming out it's very high distortion it's yeah see look at that it's jittery it's twitchy the needles moving up and down uh, the bottom of the sine wave has distortion the top looks good or relatively good but now the thing is I'm supposed to turn this range switch down until we get a reading but this this distortion so high it's reading like 60 percent distortion right now according to this meter so let's do something a little different here let's lower the frequency see look how bad that is it's almost like you can't lock in okay let's turn this down to 500 Hertz do the same thing there's our signal sine wave and by the way I'm just using a cheap Chinese DDS signal generator here and I, you know it's two channel uh, nothing special here it's, it's just a bench that I use for generating signals okay so let's go through this again calibrate set it to full scale okay everything's good here uh, let's set it to read and watch the scope and it went silent so what it did is I think it auto uh, locked in so let's turn this range switch down and right there I'm on the 1% scale so I'm reading about 6.65 percent distortion and if you look in the scope you can see all the distortion that's been uh, uh, notched out I think there's a lot of hash and noise that comes from my bench it doesn't seem to affect when I change lights and turn off lights and stuff it doesn't seem to affect it but this seems to be working now so I got right now I got 6.6 percent point six six percent distortion and you can see it all on the uh, scope there I turn this up it just gets worse and worse that's at 500 Hertz Let's try a different frequency. Let's try 1500 kilohertz. 1500 kilohertz. Level's the same. Switch it to read. It's really having a hard time. The meter is really twitchy. It's almost like it's not stable. See? Yeah. Nothing. I'm beginning to think this is buggered. Maybe dirty contacts in the relay, or maybe we got a bum power supply.
here's on the 3% scale, and I am reading, again, 0.65 or so. But it's really twitching out. So I, I think it is, uh, does, it is faulty. So I'm going to open this up and have a look inside. I think it might be dirty relay contacts, or, like I said, it might be a bum power supply. Those um, 78, 79 volt regulators, those uh, voltage regulators, they can they can fail. Yeah, it's very twitchy. It's not locking properly. All right, so let's open it up. All right, so here's the bottom removed. Here's the two regulators. This is the plus 12 volt on this side, negative on this side. So I'm going to take some measurements here. Let's have a look. You can see this. Yeah, measure the positive. And we've got 12.08. And let's read the negative. And look at this. 11 point, it's almost 11.6. It's low. It's low. It's low but it's stable so let's see if uh, if I twerculate the uh, I'm gonna get a reading on this let me see let's try different uh, frequencies here I'm on a thousand Hertz right now turn it down I'm starting to do its freak out thing again to show you guys it's behaving read from over here but that's not right it shouldn't be 11.59 And I did see it go up and down. Let me try different things here. Staying stable. Well, I got the frequency at four kilohertz right now. Yeah, I happen to think that voltage regulator is kaput. So let me pop a new one in and we will see. I don't know if that will make a difference on the operation of this thing. It's not really hot or warm, it's just barely warm. What I might do is connect up a load to this and just try it to see how much uh, regulation this chip has. Just tack on a, a lead to the negative 12 volts out and ground and then I can hook it up to my electronic load and dial up the current and I can see how this 
regulators if it's bad or not. I think it is bad, this minus 12 volt regulator. All right, so I got an electronic load hooked up and uh, right now it's only drawing about 180 milliamps. So let me probe the output of this device. Let me show you, it says 11.59. It stays pretty rock stable. And as I increase the current, Uh, keep going up on the current and it stays stable at this 1.6 volts or 11.6 keep slowly increasing it where am I at now about 570 milliamps up to this point where it there it starts dropping right there and that's 600 700 milliamps that's in addition to the circuitry that's loading this regulator down. So the regulator is working. It is just not putting on the right voltage. And I'm kind of suspicious of this regulator because when I did turn it on and I was measuring it, I saw that voltage jumping around a bit. So I'm gonna pop a new one in and we'll see if we get any improvement here. Okay, so here is our motor roll apart 7912 CT. I'm going to replace it with a new 7912 CSP. I don't know what the difference is, but pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, let's see if this. We can get this one in. Kind of hard, the transformer's right in the way here. It's right over top of these parts. A little bit of access, but I hope I got the holes cleaned out good. If I can line up my pins, get them through the hole, I'll be laughing. There we go. I think I got it, yeah. Okay, let me position this and screw it down. The screw here. Get my big fat fingers in this corner here and get there we go. And then the washer and washer and nut. Torque this down and then I'll check for short before I solder. Good. Just want to make sure I don't have a shorted heat sink tab. So it's good. Okay, that's the heat sink. That's the screw. And this is the tab. I got nothing. Okay. So we are good. Let's solder that in. And there it is. Okay, let's check the voltage now. Let's turn on power here. There we go. Eleven point nine. 
a little better, closer to 12 volts. Still doing our freak out thing. So that rules out power supply. Let's uh, look somewhere else. I'm on an isolation transformer, by the way, so that's why I can touch it with my soldering iron. Okay. All right, a little bit of an update here. I uh, been poking around with this for a few hours, trying to figure out what's going on. I used some cold spray. Kind of had an effect when I was spraying around here. Um, what I was doing is I was feeding a signal in, and I was trying to measure the distortion, but on this, reading the scope, it was outputting his full signal it wasn't uh, locking in on the uh, fundamental frequency I was feeding in so it looked like to me um, a, di a dicky contact or um, a poor connection a cold sod or something like that and I was spraying around here with the uh, cold spray and it seemed to have a largest effect and then I started uh, doing a little bit of percussive maintenance tapping different components and I got to this relay and it really jumped. So I'm, I'm, I'm really suspecting this relay. So I pulled it out, desoldered it, and uh, we, we're going to check it together here and uh, see if that's it. There's a lot going on here. And um, the schematic I have is not the greatest. It's pretty grainy and difficult to read. Um, it's uh, The resolution is pretty low. But uh, we're going to, let's test this relay and see what it says. I have a feeling we got bad contacts here. That's my guess. That or one of these other ones because these are the range switching uh, relays. Um, it uh, selects different capacitors. All these different capacitors here selects them for the, there's a bridge circuit. There's a bridge preamplifier and a bridge post amplifier. And then there's the range switching in between. I can show you a little bit of the uh, schematic here. All right, so here's the relay. It's a national NF2-12 volts, 12 volt relay. I think it's special in the, in the sense that it has a ground lug here that kind of, uh, I think it's a shield, some kind of a shield maybe for the contacts or the coil, I'm not sure. But we have coil here. Uh, this is our common. And this is our normally closed, normally open. Okay, so let's connect first of all. Let's connect the uh, normally closed and see what we get for contact. We're getting 65, 50 milliohms, which isn't that. I would expect it to be a little less than that see if it's got gold contacts. Here's the other side, 29, 27. That's a little better. Okay, let's uh, connect up this one and let's energize the relay. Because this is when I think it's not working properly. It's energized. Oh yeah, look at that, we got 10 ohms. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a big problem. Okay, let's try the other side. Wow, 15, 16. That's terrible. Yeah, that's our problem right there. It's introducing that resistance in the circuit, the tuned circuit. I work the contacts. Doesn't get any better. So I'm definitely going to have to clean this relay. Let's see if we can open it. Is there liquid damage on here? Maybe it's just flux. Okay. So where's all our contacts? Oh yeah, down here. 
I don't know how I'm going to clean those. Those are, there's a, these contacts are, uh, there's two contacts for each. I don't know, you can see it. I'll zoom in. You see there's two on this one, there's two, it's split in half. And then on the end, there's two sets of contacts on it. And then there's a, this is the common. And then the other. So we gotta clean this somehow. That's our problem. Let me show you on the schematic where this relay lives. Alrighty, so here's, this block here is a bridge preamplifier. If you can read that, oh, it's off screen. And then there's a bridge post amplifier here. And here's our networks of capacitors. There's eight capacitors here and a bunch of ranging uh, resistors on this side. There's relays. The relay I pulled out is this one here, RLJ, RLJ1, RLJ2. So those are the, the ones who's having troubles with it when it the relay pulls in these contacts are dirty and they're not providing a good path for the signal through these capacitors and there's another relay here RLK RLK1 uh, RLK2 RLK3 and 4 there's four sets of contacts on that one uh, four poles the RLJ has two poles the one I just tested and then there's two other relays here one is uh, RLM this one here I think and then this one here is RLM there's another one in here too I can't remember see this is a problem with this schematic I can't hardly read it so looks like we had dirty contacts on these these ones here and that was causing mayhem in all the circuitry so I'm gonna clean those contacts now and put it back together all right so I'm hearing from you guys you want to see these kind of procedures here so I'm going to just do this on camera cleaning this is not going to be fun though because I can't really get anything in this little spot here and there's this white lock and that is what pushes on the contacts it lifts the contacts when it's uh, relaxed and when it's energized it pulls that contact down and you can see that in operation there but we need to clean the the gap here that's on the top that's where we're getting our resistance so I got a chunk of uh, thousand grit thousand grit sandpaper and I cut off a little sliver of it hopefully it's going to be a bit right size and I'm just going to slide it in the gap and bottom it out and then close the contacts and just give it a there's really not much pressure on these contacts. So I'm just going to try this. It's awkward as all hell. Ideally, the solution would be to replace the relay, but I don't have the patience or the time to look for another relay. Maybe I'll do that in the future. But uh, for now, if we can just dress these contacts back and get them working again. Let me try this. Flip the, flip the sandpaper over and do the other side. Yeah, it's really not biting because I don't have any pressure on the... It doesn't have much pressure on the contacts. I really don't want to bend them either. Let's try this side a bit. And I was looking at the magnifying glass. These are not gold plated. These are just silver contacts, which is, I don't know why they chose that. In a signal application like this, you want to have gold so that you don't get corrosion and you get the best contact resistance. I mean, I could sub substitute something in. It's not hard. It's a 12 volt relay, double pull, double, uh, double pull, double throw. And uh, pretty, pretty.
pretty easy to resub something in. I just have to uh, rewire it for the hole, for the holes. Let's do this side now. And then wiggle that around, clean off any dirt if there is any. All right, you get a little contact cleaner. So this is the zero residue stuff, Electrosolve. We're just going to flush off everything that we just, just to wash it all off. Okay, I'm going to hook this back up and see how we're doing for contact resistance. You should be able to see the scope on the screen now. Let's try this again. I have a feeling it didn't do much, but you never know. Okay, power this coil up. Oh, look at that, 26 milliohms. That's a lot better. That's a lot better than what it was. Let's do the other side. Thirty. Thirty-five. Forty-five. I'm going to give it one more clean. And then uh, give it one more clean and then another flush and then I'm gonna put it back together. Looks like we got a little bit of little bit of stuff off the contacts. You can see it there on the sandpaper. But uh, I'm gonna keep going with this because it seems to be working. And uh, I'll bring you back in when there's something to show you. All right, so we're all finished. Let's put it back in. Flip that around and solder it. sure it's seated all the, way, all the way down to the board before I do all the rest of the pins. Okay, I'll clean the flux off the board and then we'll give her a test. All right, so we're connected back up to our scope and our signal generator. Let's turn it on. And it takes a little bit for it to stabilize. I'm on calibration now, so feeding it a thousand hertz tone and it's not freaking out, which is good. So let's set this to full scale. Now, when I push this to read, it should tell me the true distortion, and we should be able to see it on the screen. Um, the sine wave on the screen should disappear as the as the uh, 
the frequency oscillator locks in. There it goes. Let's turn this range switch down to read what we have. Minus 20, minus 40. So I'm on the, uh, let's see here, I'm on the 1% full scale. So that's 1%. So I'm reading about 0.75% distortion. And I don't know if that's right or not, but looking at this screen on the scope, there's a lot of uh, garbage that is being picked up. And that's my bench, I'm guessing. It doesn't really matter if I turn lights off. It doesn't seem to make any difference. And I put the lid on and it didn't make any difference either. So I don't know if this thing, what I'm picking up here is correct. Let's try that again. My, my camera battery went dead, so let's plug it into power and let it continue on. So yes, I think it is working. Not sure how well it's working. Uh, somebody asked that these filters work. Yes, they do. Uh, here's the waiting filter. The waiting filter is a, is a, it's a bandpass filter for uh, telephone telephone frequencies I believe up to about 3,000 Hertz and that's working the low cut is working the high cut is working that actually helps clean up the signal quite a bit but the distortion does not drop very much it stays pretty much the same seems like my signal is modulated or something that's what's going on here maybe that's yeah, it's hard to say shut this off noise level it does seem to work it's very sensitive minus 12 here so 82 dB, yeah, minus two, 80, minus 82. And you can see the noise on the uh, scope. Signal generator back on locks in seems to work let's try some different frequencies let's go up to two kilohertz Distortion level stays the same. Let's go up to three kilohertz. Same thing. Four kilohertz. And it reads the same distortion all across the frequency range. That's what kind of confuses me here. 5 kilohertz, 6, 7, 8, 9, so it does lock in and it does work and I think I fixed it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for your help, you guys. You're, you're, uh, you're brilliant. You helped me out of a bind here. Um, gave me a lot of good suggestions what to look for. And uh, I want to thank you for that. So hopefully we can use this in the future and we can uh, maybe uh, see if we can do some before and after tests on different things. 
for example, I have a, an Akai reel-to-reel -reel tape deck and it's got some noisy amplifiers in it. And that's one of the things I was curious on using this for. I wanted to see if we could measure the noise before and after transistors or before and after replacing caps, something like that, to that effect. Just to see how, if what I'm doing is, is, is making any headway. So anyways, like I said, thanks again for all your help. Talk to you on the next one. Thanks for watching.